Hi everyone, I'm Shannon, professional counselor here in Louisville, Kentucky. Thanks for joining us for our Ask Anything series. These are questions that have been asked by you guys and we get them answered by professionals in the field. Today we have Jessica Heckroth with us. She's a registered dietitian nutritionist. She's in private practice with Beyond Nutrition Co. Um, and that's a nutrition practice established to empower women and help them redefine their health goals. So she provides individual nutrition um, counseling sessions for women who are really ready to prioritize their health, build sustainable habits, and step away from the diets for good. She sees clients in person and um, virtually, and that's throughout the entire state of Kentucky, so not just specific to Louisville. And if you're interested in learning more about her services or talking with her at all, you can check out her site, and that's um, the beyond nutrition co.com or you can email her at beyond nutrition co at gmail.com but thanks Jessica for being with us um, we have a great question for you today this one came in um, about a lot of what's going on um, in the world today with stress and pandemic and was talking about eating and I was like mm, we've got to get Jessica on here to answer this question for us um, but the question is I know when I'm stressed that I eat a lot more and with the pandemic and everything else going on, I feel like I'm always stressed. So therefore I'm always eating. What do I do? Yeah, that's a really good question. I feel like everyone <clears throat> is struggling with emotional eating and stress a lot more right now. Um, I think for emotional eating, it's really helpful to, when you're in a neutral state and you're not stressed to try and reflect back on previous experiences of emotional eating and try and think to yourself, um, was I truly hungry or, well, I guess, so if in this situation you're stressed, so, you know, it's not really the physical hunger that you're feeling. So trying to come up with some ideas of things you could manage the emotion besides food. You know, food is a good coping mechanism, but it shouldn't be our only one, I don't think. Um, so trying to come up with some other options too. So if you're stressed, that could be like going for a walk or making a cup of tea or calling a friend. Mm -hmm. And in that moment, instead of grabbing the snack, um, trying to just do 10 minutes of that activity and then coming back to the food. I think that can be a helpful technique to kind of work through the emotions a little bit more. And then knowing that the food's still there, you know, and then when you do choose to eat it, trying to, you know, eat slowly and mindfully, um, pick something that's really satisfying to you and allow yourself to enjoy it without feeling guilt, but trying to, you know, manage the emotion a little bit more. Um, that's a, just a technique that I think is really helpful. But then also on the day-to-day, -day, trying to nourish your body enough. I think a lot of times we stress eat um, out of like a reflex of just not eating enough throughout the day, you know? So it's like you get home from work and you're stressed. But if you looked back and reflect a little bit, a little bit, did you eat much at all that day? You know, you might not be as willing to do that like 10 minutes of activity if you're starving to, you know, too. Um, but you might not even realize it, I guess, at the same time because you're just so stressed. Um, so trying to manage your hunger throughout the day, I think sets you up to be able to do that technique a little bit. Yeah, yeah, for sure. And I think kind of like emotional, I mean, I think like even to me, like I'm not in that realm and emotional eating is kind of even like a new term. Like how, it seemed like in the beginning you were kind of differentiating between like, how do we figure out if it's like hunger eating or emotional eating, like that territory, yeah, sometimes seems like they overlap or yeah, how do we navigate that? Um, yeah, I think a lot of people are kind of out of touch with their hunger cues, um, especially if you've been dieting for a really long time. Um, we're kind of taught like you shouldn't be hungry or don't listen to your hunger, you know, um, just in diet culture. So it's, it's very common to not feel in touch with your hunger cues or feel like you can trust them either. Um, so the first step, you're right, would be like identifying, is it a true physical hunger or is it an emotional hunger um, mm -hmm. or like an emotional need that, which is like, where, why are you reaching to the cabinet, you know, for the food, which really is it. Um, so a lot of times to get in touch with your hunger cues, I work with like a hunger and fullness scale and it kind of just helps you put a number to where you are. Um, so one would be like, you're really, really hungry. Like you might pass out if you don't eat something okay. and 10 would be, wow, I just ate Thanksgiving dinner. I'm really full. Um, and so that's the scale. And a lot of times people jump from one into the other. Um, like we wait all day and not eat. So we're like a two and then we eat so much. We're at like an eight, you know, um, we should really try and stay closer to like the three to five range. 
um, or sorry, sorry, the five, the five, the four to the four to six range. Um, <laughs> um, but navigating that can be really tricky. So, you know, just kind of through your day thinking to yourself, okay, have I eaten a little bit before this? I should probably get something now. So you don't go all the way to that really starving, you know? Sure. Um, so I think just kind of listening more really helps you um, instead of just trying to deny it all the time. Yeah. Well, and now thinking that that kind of makes sense, like in regards to the emotional component too, oftentimes we are, our minds and bodies and emotional signals are very disconnected from listening to our bodies for emotional signals. And so, yeah, if it's emotional eating and we also have a difficult time navigating our body, like hunger signals, like makes sense why it happens so much. And of course, when we're stressed and emotional things are going on in the world and in our lives, that it just kind of increases and yeah, gets out of our hands a little bit. Yeah. I feel like we're just so disconnected um, from our bodies, you know, because we're just kind of like trying to change them all the time. Then we doesn't really allow us to listen to them. Um, so I think usually like the first step is just eating enough, you know, trying to really prioritize eating. Um, so you can set yourself up to manage your emotions, I guess, in a more <laughs> neutral state. Um, yeah. But yeah, I know it's definitely hard with all the stress. I feel like there's so much stress. We've got to like meet it on the front end and just try and manage it, I guess, as much as we can. You know, it's, there's, there's, it's still going to be there, but. Yeah, it's not like what we're doing maybe in our day, day-to-day self-care, caring for ourselves is going to wipe all that stress away, but maybe it'll be able to allow it to settle a little bit differently when it does come inside and affect our lives. Yes, I agree. (laughs) Oh, I love that. Is there any other kind of like, I don't know, tips or I don't know if there's tricks, but just like anything else in regards to mindful eating or the stress and the pandemic and emotional eating that you kind of want to leave our audience with? Um, I'd say, I think the biggest thing when, hmm, so many things, when you're (laughs) trying to, you know, make peace with food and really step into, you know, prioritizing your health, um, trying to focus on that, like focus on your health instead of the weight. I think we get caught up in what the scale is saying. Um, but that number, you know, really doesn't determine our health at all. I think it's more important to focus on how you're feeling every day, your mood, your stress, your energy, um, you know, health, you know, what's going on as far as that goes, whether that be like blood pressure levels or cholesterol levels, you know, those things, those values are important. Um, I think the weight, we just get so caught up in that. It like blurs our vision completely. Mm -hmm. Uh, So try and focus on, on your health and step away from the weight and prioritizing yourself as far as self-care and eating, eating as a form of self-care too. Um, So just the basics can really get you far, I think. Yeah. Yeah. I really like that. And I think the the number on the scale usually is so concrete that it's like something easier for us to hang on to, but right. this other stuff seems really difficult because it's new maybe of focusing on our body and being mindful. Um, but once you kind of build those muscles and I'm sure do it more frequently, it becomes a little bit like second nature or a little bit more concrete and knowing the signals. Yes, definitely. The hunger cues come back so quickly. I like always love to see that because it like shows how strong your body is and resilient. It will come back. I think dieting just like silences them, but they come back pretty quickly. Yeah. Oh, thank you. And thank you for spending some time with us today. Guys, remember if you want to get in contact with Jessica, she's got a site. It's the beyond nutrition co.com. And um, if you guys have a question for us, just let us know, DM us, email us, and we'll get it answered for you by a professional in the field. But until next time, enjoy the rest of your day. Thanks. Bye.